We have with us now the attorney, uh, Benjamin Crump. Uh, he's an attorney uh, and a partner of the Tallahassee firm of Parks and Crump. And uh, he's the attorney for Tracy Martin and Sabrina Fulton. Those are their parents. And we've uh, invited him to give his insight. And this this person can really tell us what's going on and what the plan might be moving forward as a representative for the family. Please welcome to the show, Attorney Benjamin Crump. Good well, morning, morning, sir. Welcome. Good morning, morning. Good morning. Thank you all for having me, Steve. And I certainly want to thank all your listeners for being there to support this family through this long journey for justice. And uh, it seemed like with this verdict, it's gotten even longer. But I wanted to give the message, Steve. Uh, you met them at the Essence Festival. And yeah. I personally want to thank you as a frat brother and a, a brother, how you greeted them with all the love. It really inspired them, and they never forgot that. Wow. Um, well, thank you, sir. But Sabrina and Tracy were devastated like most of us. Uh, they were heartbroken when that verdict was returned. They uh, cried. They prayed. They got up and went to church, and then Sabrina, Steve, called me and said, Attorney Crump, we got to roll up our sleeves because even though we've come a long way, we still got a long way to go to make sure this don't happen to any more of our children or anybody else's children because of this verdict and the message it sent. And I, I couldn't believe it. She said she's not going to be negative. She's going to be able to to get something positive out of this. And the most profound thing she said was this, Steve, I will not let this verdict define Trayvon. We, our community, will define Trayvon's legacy. Mm. All right. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's Strong. so, so important. Mm-hmm. And it's so healing for so many people because, see, we need to know how the parents are handling this. We need to know that, that they're going to continue to fight. We need to know that they're trying to take this and make it a positive. And we have got to follow their lead. We can't turn this into a negative when they've got to, they're trying to really define their son's legacy and place in this thing as really an innocent child who was doing nothing, who was gunned down for doing absolutely nothing. So let me ask you this, uh, Attorney Benjamin. Uh, what's next for the case? She said, let's roll our sleeves up. Can you talk about any of the possibilities yeah. of a wrongful death suit, the federal government involvement? What what, what, what can you share with us? Yeah, certainly. And Steve, uh, to you and Tommy and everybody, it is one of those things where we got to really be focused. Everybody is thinking, well, it's going to die down. And we can't let that happen. I was on a conference call with 2,000 young people across the country. God bless the young people because they refuse to be quiet. What we're looking at doing, certainly we're looking at uh, civil matters, but for the masses and making it bigger than just uh, Sabrina and Tracy because they deeply care about your children as well, we're talking about going with Reverend Sharpton and Martin Luther King III to Washington, D.C. on August 24th for the 50th anniversary of the Great March on Washington. And they have said they're going to use uh, as a focal point justice for Trayvon and Trayvon's unknown at that rally. So we want to get everybody there because we want the Justice Department to hear us and let them know that it's not going away because the issue has been framed, Stephen. If you watch that trial, the defense strategy was to say because a black teenager had burglarized a townhome that now it was an indictment on any black teenage male that was walking through the neighborhood that you had the right to profile and follow that suspicious person based on what they were wearing or how they looked. And that's profiling. The U.S. Supreme Court has said profiling is illegal. The police can't do it. So can a private citizen do what the police Mm. can't even do? And that is the issue. We got to determine, is that a civil rights violation? And if it is, he should be prosecuted. So we got to have everybody signing petitions, everybody rallying, saying the federal government, are we going to let private citizens profile our children? 
because like Sabrina Fulton said, if it happened to my child, it can happen to your child. Yeah. Oh, man, for sure. That's you know, man, man, we've got so many. What, what I think is important is for everybody that listens is to have some form of action. People want to do something. Reverend Al was just on earlier, and he's with the uh, National Action Network dot mm-hmm. net. And this Saturday, he's asking this very organized. If you go online to the National Action Network dot net, you can see where, what time the rally will be in your city in front of your federal building to send a message to the federal building that we want you to look into this matter as is right by law. See, since we since we doing stand your ground laws and and self defense laws and all this here, then let's do all the laws. And if the law says that the federal government can look into this and they promised they were suspended until after the trial to see how it went, well, we know how it went. And now we just want to be able to really explore all of what it was. Let, let, let me ask you a question, man. And I know this probably might not be a good one because you're the attorneys for the family. Yes, sir. How did you feel about the job that the prosecution did? Or are you able to speak on that? Well, I'll say two things, Steve, and certainly uh, our styles are different. We were not the prosecutors. I would have argued things and probably had a different style, and we can have farther conversations about this here. I think, number one, I applaud them for taking the case. In Florida, we have 67 counties. 66 other prosecutors would not have prosecuted the case. In fact, the prosecutor for Seminole County refused to prosecute. So I applaud Angela Corey's office for at least prosecuting okay. the case. In right. summation, they brought it back to the heart of the matter, Stephen. That's what I had you say? said to everybody this case was about. It went hey, uh, hey, John, hey, I, hey, yeah. hey um, uh, yeah. Attorney Crump, hang on. We're going to yeah. take a short break. We'll be right back. Hang on for me. Yes, sir. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Attorney Crump, you still there? I'm still here, Steve. Hey, man, let me ask you a question about the jury. Yeah. Why was the move made to go with six versus 12? And who made that decision? And what advantage did it play to either side? Well, in Florida, uh, the U.S. Supreme Court made a determination back in the 70s that uh, you could have six-person juries if it was not a capital felony, which meant you could be put to death. And so Florida was one of the many states that adopted six-member juries on nine uh, capital felony crimes, and that's why that was there. As it relates to the six women, Steve, you know, it's a lot of things that happened that uh, many lawyers would have done differently. I, I thought that the judge when she said they could not strike two of the white women because the state was only striking white women. I, I did not agree with that. I thought that was a pillable issue, especially when the defense then came and struck two black women on the Benadry. And so it is mm. a lot of things that you scratch your head about. Uh, but I think we all have to know when we get an opportunity to serve on a jury, we have to run to jury duty. A lot of us try to get off, even in Trayvon's case, you have people trying to get off the jury from our community that could have made a world of difference because we know as lawyers, if there's uh, two blacks in that room, it becomes critical mass and the whole deliberation changes. But if you have all whites and one Hispanic, how many of them really understand who Trayvon Martin was and I believe the defense used that, especially with how they tried this case, as we were talking before, about if a black male had broke in or burglarized a home in your community. Now it's okay. It's a license that you can profile and follow him and, in essence, take the law into your own hand just because he looked like somebody else who broke into a house. If that applied to any other racial group, people would go crazy when you think about all these tragedies like the Colorado shooting. Can we now just stop every young white teenage male who go into a movie theater on our own volition just because we think he looked like him? 
And that is going to be a question that the Justice Department has to address because what are we telling society? Mm-hmm. You can stop a black male because he's a black male and we think they're criminals. Uh, uh, Attorney Crump, let me ask you a question. What's the percentage chance you think of the federal government picking this case up? You know, Steve, I will tell you, it is, uh, I don't believe very good unless we really, really remain vocal and vigilant because after it died out, I believe they will try to sweep it under the rug after everybody forgets about it. But if we remain vocal, I think they got to address it because the issue is right there framed, and it's a legitimate question. Can a private citizen, a neighborhood watch volunteer, have more rights than a police department? And also, can we look at the conduct of the police department in this matter? Because remember, 2.2 million people signed the petition because the Sanford Police Department was perfectly willing to not arrest the killer of an unarmed teenager. They were fine with it. And so that's what we're up against. We want the federal government to look at those police departments. And remember this, Steve, when you watch that trial, I have never seen police officers come up and help the defense. Man, in my life. Prosecution. Mm -hmm. My man, in my life, I've never, no one heard of that. Everybody on on CNN, HLN, Nancy Grace were stunned. Uh, Anderson Cooper. I mean, everybody that's got a brain in their head. I've never seen that, man. That can only say to me, excuse me, but I'm just a regular guy, so I can. That can only say to me that this police department knows full well the prosecution, and they know full well who George Zimmerman's daddy was. Mm. Yep. That's that's all true. Cause, Cause you can't tell me, man, if you ain't got connections, how you kill a boy and don't get arrested for it. You you you, you got to have somebody calling somebody to go, hey, you know who that is, don't you? That's the only way that works. You kill a person, you got to get arrested, man. I, I, it is it is mind boggling, Steve, that police officers will go against the prosecution in a court, and we see that yeah. when it's the reverse. They would go out their way to convict the young black man. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. they were trying to give all the deference in the world to the killer of an I'm unarmed teenager. Yeah. Listen all to me, man. Mm-hmm. You, you are so correct because just from watching Law and Order, Thank you, Steve. the police department Work. needs the prosecution yes. to prove all their cases. Yes. The they, get yes. they get angry. They get angry with yes. the prosecution if they mishandle the case and they've been out in the streets trying to prove something. Uh-huh. But these officers, that officer went up there, man, and said he believed George Zimmerman's story, his take on it, and didn't have nothing to prove it. I, n- I, n- I don't even believe that Trayvon Martin was ever straddling George Zimmerman. No. I really don't believe We're- that. Well, and I know I'm about to go, but I want to say this, Steve. You are absolutely right. When you think about this, and this is a question for your listeners, and we'll come back and talk about it. Everybody saw how dark it was that night. Everybody heard every witness say how dark it was that night. How in the world could Trayvon Martin see that black gun in a black holster inside, not to his side, but farther to his back? Come on, man. Come on, come on. George come on. Daddy been running this so day one. It is so unbelievable that the witnesses and everybody just said it don't matter if he had the gun out. It don't matter if Trayvon was trying to back away when he shot him. We just gonna overlook that because <laughs> black boys have burglarized our house before, and it doesn't matter if Trayvon was completely innocent, doing everything he had every legal right to do. We're going to give this license to Joe Citizen more power than the police, and that is a problem for all our children. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 